Hello everyone and welcome to another video here in the channel. So, we got a couple of news. If you guys were living under a rock for this past weekend, one thing that you might have missed is that we now have our newest course, which is of course the Marmoset course. We talked briefly about it, there's a live stream here on the channel in case you want to watch it, uh, and we cover everything about Marmoset texturing, bakes, render, presentation, a lot of different things. But I realized, I realized after publishing and uh, checking some of the feedback, that we missed one very important thing and that's clay renders. I'm not sure how I forgot to record that, maybe because we've covered that several times here in the channel, but I wanna show you a cool thing here about clay renders that I think everyone should know about. So uh, clay renders, in case you guys are unaware, are these very basic renders that we sometimes do for our assets. Ideally, you want to go through the whole texturing process, right, to showcase your stuff in the best possible way. Sometimes you're going to do just like basic materials, but clay renders are very, very common. They they used to be known as ambient occlusion renders because the ambient occlusion used to have like most of the information. But as time has gone by, like people have been like tweaking and making clay renders look even better. So I want to talk a little bit about that. And to do that, I'm going to be using this scene. This is from chapter five from our course, which is the, the goblin chapter, where again, we go through every single thing. And uh, we're going to start with a very basic setup. This is, of course, Marmoset 5. And let me show you how we're going to start. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of the background and I'm going to go to each of these maps. And what I want to do is I want to disable the albedo color. Like we're not going to be using the albedo map. We are going to be using the normal map. Sometimes we can use a roughness map and other maps like that, but we pretty much don't want to use any of this. And the way to build a very basic like clay render material is just assign any material to your object like this one right here and then change the color to a hue that you might like. There's some people that like to do a red hue. There's some people that like to do a little bit of a yellowish or green issue depending on again what kind of clay did you want to go for but as you can see right here if we're not using the normal map information then we miss a lot of the elements from the object that's why in this particular case right here i'm going to be using this one and by only removing the albedo map we're back to a very basic sort of like lambert or flat color right like we see all of the details we see the transparency we see the roughness but we're not seeing the clay uh, or sorry the sort of like smooth effect now here what i'm going to do is i'm definitely going to remove the roughness on this particular one i'm going gonna bring my roughness down because I want this thing to be a little bit shinier, right? Like a little bit like clay. Now, if the normal map is a little bit too intense, I, I don't recommend removing it. It's, it's going to be a little bit too much. We can try checking if one of this is going to do something. Not really in this case, but let's change the color. And again, let's go for something that's a little bit more orangey, something that resembles or looks a little bit more like clay. Keep in mind that this is going to look way, way different once we go into ray tracing mode, right? Ray tracing will give us softer shadows, softer lights, softer pretty much everything. It's going to look a lot nicer. So now let's go, for instance, here to the props. And again, let's remove this one right here. Change the color back to a gray element. And here's my tip. This is one of the things. If you've done clay renders before, that's fine. I know this information might not be new for you, but I want to explain this very, very interesting fact. And that's the fact that even though we're doing a clay render, that doesn't mean that you cannot play with a little bit of contrast in the colors that you're using for your clay. So for instance, you can see right here, all of these props that are supposed to be made out of metal and that are usually going to be probably a little bit darker than the skin. We can utilize this element and make it so that it's a little bit of a darker clay something like that right now if your objects are divided into multiple pieces for instance this one's i think uh, i'm not i don't remember if i have them in a single one or not i don't think so but if you have them in multiple objects you could color each specific element slightly different now Clay has a very interesting property, and you're going to see it here on the skin of the character. If we go back to the goblin skin right here, we're, of course, going to change the color again to like a nice little clay render effect. There we go. That looks pretty, pretty interesting. Uh, let's go again. A little bit of a brown color, something like that. And what we can do is we can activate this thing called subsurface scattering, right? And subsurface scattering is a, a specific effect that we have here on the skin elements where light goes through the object. Again, remember, this one will look way, way better if we have ray tracing enabled, right? So when we turn on ray tracing, and as soon as we add a couple more lights, it's going to look even better. But even in this one, the basic uh, rasterize effect, it's going to give you a very, very nice look. So what we can do here is I can go, for instance, to the surface scattering and change the scatter depth depending on how much I want to have it. If you push it too much, as you can see right here, we're going to have this problem where everything's going to look way too like a gummy, right? Like a, like a silicone thing. So I'm going to keep it relatively low, something like that. Now for the eyes, I'm actually going to replace the eyes with just like a very basic color here. Actually, I kind of want to keep the eyes. Again, I'm just going to remove the, the color information here. There we go. So we're going to keep the eyes 
relatively interesting right there, yeah, right? Like there, there, there has to be something so that we can see the character through the through the whole thing. Here, we're also gonna keep the hair exactly as it is. I, I don't wanna change it because if we were to remove the albedo map and the transparency, it's just gonna look like the hair cards, which we of course don't like. Let's go here to the rope manila that I have and same stuff. I'm just gonna remove the information right here. Um, and finally, I believe where, oh, this one's coming from the emissive. So in this particular case, you can keep the emissive. I don't think it's going to really hurt us too much, which is this emissive that I have here on this uh, crystal. It looks especially again, nice when we use raster effect where, because we're going to get this very nice effect right there. But again, you can remove it. Now, going back to this element right here to the pendants, one of the things that we can do is we can change the subsurface scattering because right now this has no subsurface scattering, right? So I'm going to go here to transmission. I'm gonna change this to surface scattering. There we go. And as we push the subsurface scattering up, you should see that we get more of this effect. Now I'm not gonna use a scatter map in this case. I'm gonna remove that one. And we should be able to see something here. Let me check that this is working, especially here on this elements. There you go. Can you see how like Oh, wait a second. We have another mask right here. Let's get re let's remove that one. There we go. So now, as you can see, this is going to affect every single part of the element, especially this trims that we have right here. This is a very important thing about subsurface scattering, guys, and a lot of people miss this like very frequently. Subsurface scattering will depend a lot on the thickness of your object. That's why I'm not selecting or adding subsurface scattering to the cloak right here, because the cloak is just a plane. It's a single plane. It's a single sided plane. Therefore, we have no thickness. And therefore, if we added subsurface scattering, it will be way, way too aggressive. Now for this trim right here, we actually have a little bit of thickness, same stuff for all of these elements right here. So that means that yes, we can add a little bit of scatter effects right there. Keep in mind that you can also add like color information, it will sort of like give you a little bit of a reddish hue if we do this, and the more we push it, the more of the sort of like red effect we're going to see on the thin areas. Right now, I feel like it's a little bit too much. But let's set it to red just to get something. And there you go. Can you see that? So on the like, area where light is going through, that's where you're going to see the red. And on the other areas, you might see this blue color. This is because a blue and red play in a nice sort of like complementary role in that particular part. If it's too much, of course, just bring the scatter depth down. Okay, it's it's um, pretty much unavoidable to have a little bit of that blue coming through because that's how scattering works. You will get some wavelengths absorbed by some part of the elements and some other wavelengths might not be absorbed. But yeah, that's how you how you get it. I'm going to go to the character, for instance, and I feel like we can definitely push the goblin head a little bit more. So here again on the scatter map, I'm going to push it a little bit more. There you go. See how we see a little bit more scatter coming through the ears. And then here comes the next part, which is the light setup, right? Like we need to set this in such a way that we can actually perceive or understand what's going on. I do have a plane right here, which is this wall, which I, I do want to keep. I just need to go again to the walls and maybe remove the color information there. So that's a little bit more uh, interesting. And whenever I'm doing clay renders, you usually want to have like a very sort of like clean render, right? Like you want to be able to see what's going on. So I'm going to go, for instance, to my sky here and I'm going to bring the brightness up. Really, really bring the brightness up so that we can see a little bit more of what's going on. I believe I have a little bit of fog. I'm going to remove the fog. There we go. Let's grab this light. And let's also increase the intensity of the light. Nice. Something like that. I'm actually going to grab this wall and we double you. I'm just going to push it back. This wall, by the way, is using displacement. That's why you see this very intense like silhouette going on. It's using a little bit of tessellation. Now, this one right here is acting as my feel light, which, as you can see, is, well, feeling some of the stuff here on the other side so that we don't have this super harsh shadows. So I'm going to push this one a little bit more, but I'm definitely going to add a little bit of temperature. I usually like to play with my temperatures to get something interesting on the character. There we go. Something like that. And finally, rim light, right? Like who doesn't love a nice rim light? So we're going to add a rim light here on this part right here something like that. And as you can see, the fact that we have this spotlight allows me to only focus on the character, get this very, very nice rim there on the backside of the elements, get a lot of like soft surface going there on the um, on the ears and just generate a very, very nice sort of like clay like effect. One more thing that we can do here actually is we can go to the hair, turn off the albedo map. There we go. And then go to the transparency and say, hey, I do want to use this one, but let me input the map real quick. So I'm going to use this diffuse alpha map right here on the alpha channel. There we go. And as you can see, we get this sort of like white hair, right? And we can also sort of like paint it a little bit. Again, let's make it a little bit of a darker brown. There we go. And bring the roughness a little bit down. So again, it looks a little bit more like a if it was made out of clay, we might expect it to be a little bit more like that. I do have a shot cam right here, which is the, the cam that I'm using to, to generate the, the final shot. I'm going to rotate it a little bit. Let's go for something like this. 
And as you can see, the first thing that I notice is that it's using way, way too much depth of field. So I'm gonna go all the way here to the shot cam and I'm gonna change my uh, focus. And I'm gonna use, I don't know, something like an eight or something like that. Like I, I wanna have a little bit of depth of field, but not too much. I do have more elements, and this is one of the fun parts I think about like preparing your renders, that you can add all of these elements back together. For instance, I have some papers and I have some like wooden planks, right? And if I go to all of these elements and just remove the color information and just leave on the sort of like diffuse information, it's gonna look like, a, like the behind the scenes of your project. And I always think that that kind of stuff, when you can show how you're actually building your elements, it, it always feels like a more interesting to me, especially again from a presentation perspective. Now, I definitely feel like the skin of the goblin is still a little bit too rough. And this is because of, uh, of course we're inheriting the roughness of the original map. So let's take that out and bring a little bit more a glossiness to the skin. There we go. So this looks a little bit shinier. And again, we can really perceive the forms. I would say that one of the most important parts of a clay render is for you to be able to showcase how you tackled every single part of the forms of your character, right? Where are the volumes, the peaks, the valleys? Being able to really see this is a good way to, again, present your work so that we can appreciate the forms, the sculpts, the models within your project. Then you present the final sort of like a texture element, which let me show you right here, such as this one right here, correct? Like this one is having a little bit more of a cinematic look with like a very like dim light, a little bit of this sort of like Rembrandt effect. But this is the final sort of like look that you would expect to see inside the game or inside the short, inside of a film or something. This is more of like the technical presentation of all your work. So that's it guys. Well, again, little short video today, but I just wanted to make sure that this was included, um, in this case, for free, of course, with the new Marmoset course. So, yeah, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about Marmoset, please let me just take a couple of minutes away from you and show you the little trailer here. Do you want to make your 3D models look amazing? Whether you're a game artist, a 3D modeler, or just love creating amazing renders, Marmoset Toolbox 5 is your secret weapon to amazing presentations. This course is your complete guide to baking, texturing, rendering, and presenting your work in the best possible way. With over eight hours of content, we're gonna be transforming our very simple models into awesome presentation pieces. No boring theory, just all of the information and tools that you need to start applying them right away. And the best part, everything's in real time. I'm gonna be showing you every single step of the process. We're gonna go through bakes, through textures, the presentation, shading, every single thing that you need for your projects. If you get stuck on something, don't worry, we have an amazing Discord community where you can get feedback, ask questions, and post, of course, your results. Marmoset 2 Buck 5 is an absolute powerhouse. It has the most advanced baking tools that I've seen, a very simple and straightforward approach to texturing, and of course, the fastest way to set up and present your 3D work like a pro. So, what are you waiting for? Take your renders to the next level and start mastering Marmoset 2 Buck 5. And remember, always learning, always improving. That's it, my friends. So if you haven't seen the trailer, there it is. Thank you for, for staying here. And uh, yeah, this is a very dear course to me. It's the 10th course that we've released in this channel. And as I've always said, and we'll never be tired of saying, it's all thanks to you, my friends. So hopefully, again, with this small little video about clay render, if you got the course, or if you just want to improve your renders here instead of Marmoset, you get one extra little tool for your portfolio. That's it, my friends. I'll see you back throughout the week with more shorts, videos, and of course, our live stream at the end of the week. If you have any more questions, please feel free to write them down here in the comments, reach out to me on Discord, uh, send me an email, whatever it is that you prefer. I'll be more than happy to hear your thoughts and opinions. Thank you very much, my friends. Don't forget, always learning always improving. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.